Good morning students and welcome back to my class. Today we will going to start a new topic called biomagnification. Biomagnification can be referred to increase in concentration of toxic substance in each progressive trophic level of the food chain is called biomagnification. In simple words we can say that accumulation of toxic substance in each trophic level is called biomagnification. Now why these toxic substances get accumulated in each trophic level? Because these toxic chemicals cannot be mobilized or cannot be excreted from the body. This is the reason why they accumulate. Beta, ye jo toxic substance hote hain, wo body mein metabolic activity se bhi break nahi hote hain aur na hi body se excrete ya remove kiye ja sakte hain. To kya hota hai beta? Ye ek jagi ikhatta hona shuru ho jate hain, accumulate hona shuru ho jate hain. और एक ट्रॉपिक लेवल से दूसरे ट्रॉपिक लेवल में पास होना शुरू हो जाते हैं एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड बायो मैग्निफिकेशन डोंट फॉरगेट दैट दीस टॉक्सिक सब्सटेंस कैन नॉट बी मेटाबॉलाइज्ड और कैन नॉट बी एक्सक्रीटेड आउट फ्रॉम द बॉडी दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई द कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ दीस टॉक्सिक सब्सटेंस इंक्रीजेस इन ईच ट्रॉपिक लेवल एंड दिस फिनोमेना इज नोन एज Biomagnification. Few examples of non-biodegradable chemicals or toxic substances are pesticide, insecticide, weedicide, DDT, etc. Industrial waste also contains lots of chemicals which cannot be biodegrade. For example, mercury. Children, now let us understand biomagnification by an example. We will be studying about terrestrial food chain as well as aquatic food chain to understand the phenomena of biomagnification. See it over here, children. Plants, we all know that plants grow in soil and absorbs water and minerals from soil for their growth. So when the plant absorb water and mineral from the soil, they also absorb a lot of amount of pesticide, insecticide, DDT like chemicals which are sprayed by the farmers in the crop field. We all know children to control the pest which harms the crop, farmers spray pesticide, insecticide, DDT and other chemicals to control the population of pests. So, what happens? These chemicals get mixed in the soil. And as they are non-biodegradable, what happens? These chemicals start accumulating in the soil. And when the plant absorb water and mineral from the soil, they absorb these toxic chemicals also. Now, from the soil, these chemicals have entered in the body of plants. Now what will happen beta? This is the first trophic level. Now the herbivores, take an example of goat, who take their food from the plant, will also consume the chemical or the toxic substance which is present in the plant body. Ab ek plant to khayega goat. It will eat more than one plant. That means, char punch plant, jitne bhi wo plants khayega beta, utna hi chemical ab goat ki body mein bhi aagya. We can say that the amount of chemical in the goat's body will be larger than the plant's body. Ab ye chemical, first trophic level se, second trophic level, jo ki herbivores hota hai, un mein chala gya. Okay, now what happens? The chemical present in the goat's body will enter the body of carnivore animal, those who are present in third trophic level. See over here, humans. Now, humans eat the goat as a food. So, what will happen? The chemical present in the goat will enter into the body of humans. Abhi second trophic level se third trophic level tak chala gaya. 
and the concentration of the chemical has also increased. First trophic level में कम था, second trophic level में बढ़ गया, second trophic level से third trophic level में और ज़्यादा बढ़ गया. So we can see that these toxic substances is increasing in the body of the organism present in progressive or successive trophic level. This is called biomagnification. Like humans, there are many other animals, those who are omnivores and eat plant as well as animal product. So the chances of these chemical entering in the body of omnivores are maximum. Now let us study the biomagnification in aquatic food chain that operates in water. See it over your children, phytoplanktons. The word phyto means plant. These are unicellular organisms which prepares their food by photosynthesis and hence are called phytoplanktons. Now what happens children? During the photosynthesis, phytoplanktons absorb toxic substance from water. And from where does these toxic substance has entered in the water body? Through the field or through the industrial chemical waste. But a crop field mein pesticide, insecticide jo spray kiya jata hai through the rainwater or by any other chance they flow and get mixed into the near water body. Similarly, there are many industries and factories who dump their chemical waste directly in the water. So, these chemicals enter the water body and these chemicals from the water is absorbed by phytoplanktons. Now, phytoplankton is the first trophic level and is eaten by the animals present in second trophic level. The second trophic level over here is made up of zooplankton. They feeds on phytoplankton. Now, what happened? The concentration of the chemical has increased in the second trophic level. Similarly, the organism present in second trophic level will be consumed by the organism present in third trophic level. Over here, it is formed by fishes. So fishes feed on zooplankton. And what happens? The concentration of the Toxic chemical also increases in the body of fishes. Now what happens children? These fishes is eaten by the humans and the chemical which was accumulated in the fish body has entered into the body of top carnivore or to the fourth trophic level and it is formed by top carnivores. Here I have taken the example of humans. The toxic level ka concentration sabse zyada kaha pe hoga bitter? Top carnivore mein, that is humans. See both the food chain, whether it is operating on land or whether it is operating in water. Humans occupy the top carnivore position in the food chain. So, the chances of maximum accumulation of chemical substance in a food chain is of human beings. Because we occupy the top trophic level. If we look at food chain, the top trophic level or the fourth trophic level, who is it? Human beings he occupy it. So, the chances, maximum chemical accumulation in which body will be in the fourth trophic level or in the last trophic level. And who are they? Generally, humans occupy the top trophic level in the food chain. So, in our body, there are chances of chemical concentration maximum in the chemical. And this is called biomagnification. When any toxic or chemical substance is not metabolized, and is not excreted in the body, out kiya ja sakta hai, हर ट्रॉफिक लेवल में थोड़ा थोड़ा बढ़ते 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 इसका कंसंट्रेशन लास्ट ट्रॉफिक लेवल तक मैक्सिमम हो जाता है या सबसे ज्यादा बढ़ जाता है 
उसे हम कहते हैं या इस फिनोमिना को हम कहते हैं बायोमैग्निफिकेशन आर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज ओजोन चिल्ड्रेन ओजोन इज अ गैस मेड अप ऑफ थ्री एटम्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन अ वेरी लिटिल अमाउंट ऑफ ओजोन गैस इन लोअर एटमोस्फियर कॉल ट्रोपोस्फियर इज हाईली पॉइजनस वेर एज द लार्जर अमाउंट ऑफ ओजोन गैस इन द अपर लेयर ऑफ द एटमोस्फियर नोन एज स्ट्रेटोस्फियर परफॉर्म्स इन एसेंशियल फंक्शन दिस ओजोन गैस लेयर प्रोटेक्ट द अर्थ सर्फेस फ्रॉम द हार्मुल अल्ट्रा वॉयलेट रेडिएशन दैट कम्स फ्रॉम द सन दिस अल्ट्रा वॉयलेट रेडिएशन इज हाईली 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 डेंजरस एज इट कॉजेस स्किन कैंसर so it is the ozone gas which protects the earth from harmful uv radiation coming from sun so ozone in lower atmosphere that is in troposphere is highly poisonous and when it is present on higher level of the atmosphere that is stratosphere it protects the earth from uv radiation now let us see how ozone is formed in stratosphere See it over here, children. Oxygen molecule in stratosphere by the action of ultraviolet radiation splits into two free oxygen atom. Now, the oxygen molecule combines with one free oxygen atom and forms ozone. This is how the action of ultraviolet radiation in stratosphere helps to form ozone layer. it was found that in 1980s the amount of ozone layer started to decline sharply and the reason behind the depletion of this ozone layer was a chemical called chlorofluorocarbon this chemical is used in refrigerator perfumes deodorant and spray paint now let us see how cfc depletes the ozone layer See it over here, children. In the stratosphere, CFC molecule get hit by the UV radiation. As a result, the chlorine breaks easily by the action of ultraviolet radiation. Now, what happens? This chlorine binds with one oxygen atom from the ozone to form chlorine monoxide. children what happens in stratosphere ultraviolet radiation hits the cfc molecule chlorofluorocarbons molecule after which what happens the chlorine breaks very easily now this chlorine atoms attract the oxygen atom of ozone to form chlorine monoxide jo chlorine प्रोड्यूस हुआ था सी एफ सी से वो किसे अट्रैक्ट करता है एक कार्बन एटम को जो किसका पार्ट है ओजोन का पार्ट है ओजोन वट इज द फॉर्मूला ऑफ ओजोन ओ थ्री इट इज फॉर्म बाय द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ थ्री ऑक्सीजन एटम अब इसमें से एक ऑक्सीजन एटम को कौन अट्रैक्ट कर लेता है क्लोरिन लिविंग द टू ऑक्सीजन एटम and this process continuously repeats and causes the depletion of ozone layer kyunki ozone layer kaise bani hai beta three atom of oxygen jabki isme se ek atom kon use kar le raha hai chlorine produced from cfcs and this is how the depletion of ozone is caused by chlorofluorocarbons in the year 1987 unit the united nations environment program sees the production of cfc after which it is mandatory for all the manufacturing factories to make refrigerators cfc free is program ka ye result hua ki ab jitne bhi refrigerator produce hote hain wo sare ke sare cfc free hote hain उनमें क्लोरोफ्लोरोकार्बन का यूज नहीं होता है नॉलेट इज मूव टू आर लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ दिस चैप्टर 
The useless leftover or discarded material is known as waste. It can be domestic waste, community waste, industrial waste or agricultural waste. On the basis of the way of their disposal and their persistence in the environment, waste can be classified into two groups, biodegradable waste and non-biodegradable waste. Now what is biodegradable waste? The waste that can be broken down or can be decomposed by the microorganism present in the nature into simple harmless substances is known as biodegradable waste. For example, fruits and vegetable peels, wood, paper, etc. Now how these microorganisms break or decompose these waste? They also produce a certain enzyme which helps in the digestion or breaking down these waste into simple harmless substances in the same way as we digest our food. In topic digestion, we have also studied that there are certain enzymes which helps in digestion of our food. Similarly, microorganism also produces certain enzyme which helps in breaking down these waste into simple harmless substances. The waste on which these enzymes can work are called biodegradable waste. On the other way, the substances which cannot be broken down into simple harmless substances by the microorganism present in the nature are called non-biodegradable waste. For example, plastic, glass, DDT, pesticide, etc. Improvement in our lifestyle has resulted in greater amount of waste generation. Everything comes in a beautiful packaging of plastic. And we all know that plastic is a non-biodegradable waste. So what is the solution? Adapting for R can be the solution of these non-biodegradable waste. These are reduce, refuse, recycle and repurpose. With this we have completed this chapter R environment. In our next class, we will start a new chapter. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.